This is uh, where the spare tire sits. So you unbolt that here. You can kind of slowly, well, if these are loosened, this rotates back. And these two straps will come out. Obviously, they would be tightened down on that. And from there, assuming that the fuel connection is loose and the uh, wires are loose, then the tank just comes right out. Right, I'm gonna set this down. Okay, so you can see that uh, the gas tank sits down on these two pads. Uh, the ones that I got the replacements were way too thick. So I got some smaller ones, uh, thinner ones rather. And then you've got these here. Um, before you put this on, you want to go ahead and get these wires done. Um, it's it's kind of hard to get at the sender on the back of the tank. So you want to get that wired up. I'm running an extra ground um, from the sender. It used to use, or not used to, but it uses the uh, fuel line as a, as a ground, uh, which is fine, but... Uh, you know, there's a lot of paint on that tank. Who knows if that's making good connection. So I'm going to have a separate ground for that, and I'll have a separate ground for um, the lights in the back. So <clears throat> essentially what I'm doing, rather than running extra grounds through the whole car, I'm going to have local buses. So I'll have a local ground plane that will terminate to the chassis in the back, uh, and then the same thing in the front. So hopefully that, that should help out with things. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of things on the tank and then we'll set that back in there and I'll show you the, how the wiring sets. That's the uh, cinder wire there. And basically what this does is there's a float in here and when it gets down to the bottom, when it's not floating, this is the bottom here, the top there, um, it m makes contact. So it takes this to ground uh, and then that uh, in, uh, ends up turning the light on. So you know that you're basically almost out of gas. Uh, so um, what I've done here is added this extra um, ground wire on here. This is just a, a PVC um, outdoor wire uh, stranded and then uh, I've wrapped it with um, some fabric so it sort of matches a little bit better. And we'll run this in the back along with the lights and then run this uh, to the chassis somewhere uh, rather than relying on um, what would have been the uh, copper fuel line coming in, which would have been grounded to the chassis and then coming in and then uh, actually grounding that, so. All right, when I did this before, I had a really hard time getting this to go all the way down. Um, so I was free the uh, inside of the rubber strap with just a little Windex. It's free to gas the uh, tank as well. Um, hopefully this will it worked before. I had to put uh, longer bolts in like pretty much all the way out to here and then just sort of crank this down a little bit to get it in. Definitely nerve-wracking. Um, I found one thing, pull it out a little bit, then it makes it easier to get these on, and then you have to sort of push it back up uh, to get it in. So, I'm going to jump under there real quick and make sure I got everything in the right place. Yeah, I definitely think I'm going to need to um, go with the longer bolts to get this in. And that's fine because there's two on each side. You can go with the longer one, pull it in, 
then do the other one. Also, um, sort of need to reach under here, and you can feel these two brackets on the end. And make sure you get the tank centered in the right spot. It's got a little bit of leeway on it. You want to get it one on one side or the other. So that's basically uh, what you end up with. A couple things that um, are important. One, you definitely need to put these side panels on before you put it on um, because they're going to be crammed up against the back of the car. Uh, these things were originally apparently insulated or not insulated but supported with felt on the inside maybe to keep them from vibrating. Um, of course that just collects water and helps rust everything. So. Um, I've got a little vinyl tube that goes over the stud that this screws into and then that way it keeps it um, uh, uh, does basically the same thing the felt spacer would do uh, so I've got that on each stud uh, the next thing we have to do is the thing that holds the license tag and the lights goes in here and uh, I remember when I fixed this tank there were two dents uh, basically here and here in the tank and, and now I sort of know what this is there's really not enough room for this guy to go in here without hitting that tank um, and I think that's just the way it was originally it is no big deal I mean this is the, the 50s uh, different time for making the cars particularly in England so wasn't that big a deal um, I'm going to um, put this in the grinder and on the belt sander and smooth that down and, and make it a little bit thinner and then I'll replate this and I think that that will fix it um, should supposed to be on both ends too so I have two of these and go ahead and make that change and then uh, start working on the wiring underneath that and then uh, I think the carpet's probably gonna go in next 
Just finished uh, grinding this down and sanding it. Basically what I've done is taken the, uh, you see this sort of a ridge where the casting line is on the on the back and then uh, on this front part. And you can see it's, it's pretty thick. And uh, I ground those out and then that way it's thinner. And then uh, when we put them on the, back on the spare tire carrier, you'll, you'll see uh, why that's important. Cause just this little amount here, if you can imagine that this actually touches the tank, then that's the amount of clearance you got. So uh, once I ground the back off, that was probably enough, but then it looked strange compared to the rest of it. So I went ahead and ground the rest down and uh, hit it with a couple of grits of um, paper on the belt sander. And then um, I'm not going to polish this because it, it wasn't chromed. It wasn't stainless. It wasn't supposed to look that way. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plate this the way it is and and hopefully that will have the right uh patina the right look to it uh it, it certainly won't be this bad but uh hopefully it won't stick out too much all right and get that one done and uh plate it and then uh, we'll see him back on the uh on the car working on getting the piping back here for the uh rear fender um the book the, the shorts book basically says to uh sort of glue it in place with a little trim adhesive um i'm using tape right now uh because it's this nice green color and i think it'll blend in nah, just joking uh it's a little bit easier for me to do this because i'm having to put it in take it out put it in take it out put it in take it out um and then he suggests cutting these little darts for the hole um, so basically I, I taped it in one time and I went and uh, pushed in to found the hole and put a mark and I went and cut the darts and then have come back and done this. Now obviously I'm not going to be able to leave the tape in which is a bit unfortunate. Um, so I think I'm going to try contact cement in a couple of spots and then see how that works. Uh, because I, I don't I don't know what this uh, trim adhesive is, so I'm gonna try that. I know that'll get it in place. It um, it'll probably you know like here here. You know actually what what I should do is do it um, on just one side of a, a little bit uh, you know like an, two inches away from the where the bolts are. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'll work something out and then uh, we'll get this. Get this fender in. I ended up using the um, contact cement I'm just short, so to speak, of the uh, darts for the bolt holes. So I, I think that that worked pretty well. We'll see how this goes. I think the basic strategy is to get uh, these guys in just loosely threaded and then see if I can and push this in. I imagine I'm probably going to need a piece of cardboard to help tuck that in. So I think the first step is to get one on and see how it goes. This is going to be fun. Right, there's the hole. Alright, well that's one. Yeah, definitely need a little piece of cardboard to push that in. And let's see if we can get the next one. Oh, that went right in. That's helpful.
없어. 어, well, that's not good. Managed to get one of these in not the right spot. That's one. Yeah, technical difficulties, the uh, SD card was full. All right, so I've got that in. Uh, I'm gonna tighten up these bolts on up here in the front. Uh, it's in, in the back. I've got a spacer in here to get this to clear that shackle better uh it, it i guess an interesting uh story in the progression of the mgs how they reuse parts and change the chassis and everything obviously uh this was n not how someone drew it up so i guess i had to come in and and um, bend these fenders to clear those shackles it's kind of cool i uh when i first saw the car i thought that they Fenders, of course, they weren't on the car. I thought they were dented. Um, to find out that's just how they had to clear it. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these up. That will get this in position. Uh, do the other side. And then we'll start back at the front of the car to get the uh, radiator shell on and then the, the front fenders. A um, couple updates on this. Um, I got these support bars in. And then uh, these neat little straps that they have to hold the uh the temperature sensor wire on it's a little coil up here to top it comes down it gets on here and then runs down there there's another one of these right here that keeps the wire harness from getting tangled tangled in the steering column <clears throat> it's supported back here uh, i got a bunch of the other things done uh, this grommet that i tried to make didn't work so I'm gonna have to redo that uh, we got our air cleaners on I think those look cool uh, originally it had a one air filter in the middle I think in a like sort of a, a manifold that went up and over uh, this car came with with nothing um, and some MGA parts that looks somebody uh, looked like they had adapted. Uh, so I got these to replace that. Um, got the fuel return lines or overflow. And then I've got it on the wrong side of this bearer. Um, it's supposed to be on the other side. So I need to move that. Um, <clears throat> uh, another detail that I'm going to have to change is this wire harness here and there actually are uh, protected by a, a vinyl and it could have been a rubber or plastic tube uh, I guess that's maybe because these fuel filters would leak and it would go down onto that um, so I need to get that done and then I need to build the uh, bar that will hold the battery in place so before I start on the radiator and everything I'll definitely will move that up to the front um, <clears throat> and then put the, the radiator shell uh, radiator shell on the um, little padding that goes in there the um, headlight brackets and then once that's in place you can mount the front fenders got the uh, grill on now and the front fenders uh, these are not tightened in place yet. They're just sitting here uh, So I can get this um, little side rail uh, Fit properly and now you go and cut the piece of piping that goes from just in the front there all the way back to the back corner and I think it would just be a matter of marking the spots where the bolts go through into the tub rail and uh, cutting the darts and the piping and just sort of slotting that down pushing everything in and tightening it up so it really looks cool um, it's exciting to get really you know to this point you got to get the other side uh, the side rail in it's definitely getting there 
got most of the uh, back on. And I got everything but I don't have the uh, little screws. It's got some chrome uh, 2BA screws that go in and then that'll hold the glass and then the chrome trim around the tail lights. So those are sitting there. They're wired though. Everything else is wired. Uh, spare tire holder is on. Um, missing uh, two lug nuts. And I got to plate that one too. Um, hope I can find another one. We got the uh, front fenders on now. At the uh, side mirror, the side lights, the headlights, at the, uh, the shell, and then the grill slats in. These are supposed to be painted. Uh, I think you had the option of most of them were the interior color, which is what I've done here. Or if it was a green car or a red car, I think you could go with green or red on the exterior. Uh, got the uh, little splash, the apron in the front, and the one on the back. Uh, so I had the bumper on the back. I have the bumper done on the front, but uh, when I was tightening one of the last uh, bolts in, the chrome on the outside cracked. So I guess when they plated it, there was a void. Um, so as soon as that uh, bolt cinched down, it cracked it. So that's basically ruined. Um, I could get it replated again, but I think it took, you know, I, I don't remember. I think maybe 12 weeks to get uh, it done. And I wasn't really happy with uh, the job they did. So I certainly wouldn't want to wait another 12 weeks and, and uh, get something back that I don't like. So you can buy a reproduction uh, bumper set from Moss. So I think I'm going to go ahead. That's going to be my first option. I'm going to buy just the front. I think it's like 300 bucks. It'll put it on, see if it matches everything else. Uh, hopefully it'll fit. Hopefully the holes are in the right place. And get that in. Oh, I got the uh, little windshield wipers on. Um, apparently those are totally useless, but uh, we'll see. I think they, they say the way to make the windshield wipers work well is to put rain -X on the windshield. <laughs> and it doesn't help, the, doesn't help the windshield wipers, it's just uh, the rain -X keeps the water off. Alright, so we're, we're getting close. Uh, unfortunately, I'm waiting on the, that fabric covered wire to do the separate ground bus in the front. I want to be able to get the um, side lights and the headlights on each side on a, a ground wire that goes over to the chassis. Uh, so I really can't button this up and go ahead and put the hood on until I get that done. Also, we've got um, a different valve cover that we're going to use, um, but it is, it's not warped, but it's not really flat. Uh, so I'm going to put that on my surface plate and uh, blew it up and you know scrape down the high spots and get that to fit so i got to do that um i got these neat helmet uh, little post for the uh, battery that's going to be kind of cool so we'll need to solder those in waiting on the solder plugs for that um it's really getting there Moving right along, got the hood on, the top as we call it here. I've gone and fit all the side curtains. I'm taking them out right now. Uh, and the reason why is these are made in two pieces with a clear plastic sewn in between. So you put these, uh, the little stainless trim on, and then you mark it and you cut that out on both sides. Um, and I, I believe at least I've read they were just it's a raw edge. I know that some people cut it, fold it under, and uh, and stitch it. Uh, and so what I'm doing is something similar to that. Let me bring you over here. So I'm going and I've gone and marked these with a, a you know, fabric marker, and then I've taken and take these off. And I'm going to take these to a uh, car upholstery shop. Uh, we've got a really good one here in town, not actually in my area, but uh, down in Chambly, Georgia, uh, the Mad Stitchers, and uh, have them run a stitch on the this side of that line all the way around, 
and then cut and so the stitch will go through both sides and then go and cut uh, just on this line here and so that will give us it'll still be the raw edge but it will at least be stitched right there and I have an older one uh, I don't think this is original but it's so here's an older one and I'm not sure if it's original or not but you can see that it is a raw edge but it's stitched on the inside uh, so what I've done here is I'm going and marking uh, just to the inside of the stainless trim pieces and then I'm going to have uh, I'm going to take this to an upholstery shop in Chamblee called the Mad Stitcher great group been there family owned for many many years and have them run a stitch on the inside of this line and then that'll go of course through both sides and then go and they'll be able to cut on this line and then they should be able to see that from this side and then cut because the stitch will be on this side so that uh, should be their guide to cutting the fabric on this side um, or if that's a bad idea I'm sure the guy there will know that and he will tell me how to, to do it right but we're getting all these marked out you know take them down there and uh, get them all <laughs> stitched up and then they'll be ready to be go uh, go back on the car. All right. So what we want to do is we want to make one of these. We want our battery to look like this. Uh, one of the common ways this is done is they make a kit for this Optima. It's called a tar top, and uh, basically this goes on top like this, and then it has uh, this piece here. It goes around and sticks like that so I mean that's better but it doesn't really look like this one um, one of the things that's interesting about this really is how it's made so they had these cells and they had six of them in here it's a 12 volt battery and then they had the bridges between the cells and you can see the tops right here of each cell and then they had this rim around it and they literally poured tar in there and that sealed the top. So that was called the tar topper. That's the reason that was. And they had these little caps that came out and you would uh, top off the water on that. So I was able to find some of these taps, uh, not taps, but uh, caps online. And those look really good. And then I was able to find um, this little, like a, imprint here and imprint here this was a uh, sort of a hard rubber case and it was molded and then this was um, embossed into it uh, which is a little bit beyond what I want to do but I at least have these little uh, st somewhat stickers let's see if I got them. Okay. so I've got these guys you can see these are 3D printed out of a resin, and then they can stick to the battery. Uh, it's not quite the way it was here, um, but certainly we're getting closer. Uh, and then with these tops, it looks pretty good. Um, but what I want to do is a little bit different. I want to take a battery like this and make a top that goes around here that I can have the little raised parts for each cell. I can make the bridge that goes in between them and I can have the caps in here. Uh, so the basic idea is that we're going to cut a piece of wood out to cover the top. I mean, uh, one thing you have to not worry about, but these are vents. Now they're not vents like you would normally have in that they're open right now. I could tip this battery over and, and nothing's going to come out, but they are important because under certain charging, overcharging situations, they would vent. Um, and so it's, I think it says here, uh, ventilate well, do not install an airtight container. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut holes for each one of these. Um, when we have our little top part, it will also have a hole. And then these guys are vented. So it's going to use the vents that are actually in the caps the way it was originally 
So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag the table saw out and uh, get some rough cuts in here, get some holes drilled, and start mocking this up. All right, so here's what we got so far. I've cut uh, a top piece out of uh, Luan. This is basically door skin. It's about one eighth inch thick. Um, I've gone and put uh, seven eighths holes where these little vents are. And then I've cut, uh, this is quarter inch uh, plywood. And then I've gone and cut uh, three quarter inch holes for there. And then the idea is, is that our little um, top little cap will fit down in that hole so these will be glued down to this base we'll have um, a perimeter piece that comes around here comes around this side and then a front piece that goes down basically to the the little ridge that's already in the battery all the way around and that'll go over and meet on the sides and you'll see more of that later so what I'm gonna go ahead and do tonight is get these glued in place and uh, maybe try to get the, the side pieces glued on so I can get these glued up and then uh, work on finishing them tomorrow. And here's where we are now. So we got the uh, our wonderful clamping system, uh, binder clips. Uh, I just have these sitting in place just for, you know, to show what it looks like. They come along pretty good. I kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, on the front, I was going to use this um, sticker. So I was going to have this piece. Well, I can't really show it, but anyway, this piece in the front with this, it's a 3D resin printed uh, sticker. I was going to stick that there, and then I got a little king of the road one to go down in the bottom. I now decided since this makes great economic sense to purchase a CNC router and uh, load the file for this in it and uh, try cutting it out. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to come out of this um, plywood because uh, it's mostly filler in it. Uh, so I may have to glue up uh, some quarter inch uh, poplar and uh, cut it out of that. But it uh, could be interesting. If not, I'll still have this and it'll be fine. So first car, <laughs> this could be a disaster, but at least it'll be on video. a disaster. I mean, that's a snapped a bit off, um, but I don't know. I'll get down there close. I think one thing right off is plywood. Also, I'm not completely sure I have the height set right, 
because I didn't understand how to change the increment uh, when I was setting the zero. So I think I got it right now, and I think maybe what happened was it didn't lift up high enough as it went uh, zipping off in some direction and snapped it. Um, I can also see some evidence like on this uh, right in there somewhere, it looks like um, it had the wrong height. It's also not uh, looking exactly the way I want it. Um, you can see in here, it's like a second step. I don't know if it's going to come in there and cut those deeper right around there or not. Um, so hopefully it does. This has got over an hour left to go, so we'll see. Um, definitely the wrong material. I've got some uh, poplar that I glued up. It's a solid material, and it shouldn't splinter like this stuff. Um, yeah, so it went, and it, it's cutting that again, so I think this is okay. Really cool machine. Definitely got a good some kind of lubrication on that, but it's not easy. Yeah, alright, so you can see it went and put that, that little stuff I was worried about it to cut off, so that's fine. So we're good. Alright, I'll spare you the noise and we'll check back in an hour. Alright, so it's all done. So, a lot of good. Let's just start with that. Um, I've cleaned this up just a little bit, but a couple things right off. Uh, one, one lesson learned immediately is that uh, this thing's warped really bad. And I think the reason behind that is, is I, uh, I did the super glue method of mounting this down to the table. You put uh, tape down on the table and then tape on this. You put the super glue on the tape, and then you spray the accelerator on the other tape, and you put it down. Now, I sprayed the accelerator on this side, on, on this, not the table. Um, and that worked <laughs> as a piece of plywood. Just a little bit of accelerator on that. So, I mean, look at that. It is. It was flat when it went down there. Uh, now, I think, uh, so one, you spray the accelerator on the tape that's on the bed. Um, and two, I'm gonna think I'm gonna be using this um, the uh, a solid wood rather than the the uh, plywood. I'm a little torn on that. Um, the, the detail turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Uh, so I might I, I might make two. The other thing is it's too deep. Um, I, I picked that dimension because I thought it was right, but that that's a little bit too deep. So take that out and then I'm gonna need to divide this in two so do this one with uh, the bit that's in there which worked fine and then this one I'm gonna need to switch to an even smaller bit uh, you can see that it it calculated that it couldn't do the little bit here it couldn't get this uh, look at the, the T and the E I mean there was just no way it could get in all the detail on that so I'm going to need to switch to a smaller bit for that. And I have that. Um, it's just, it was the one that snapped. And, and I think doing all of this, I don't need that bit in there. And I'm just likely to snap it um, doing that. But then I'll do this in two parts. Uh, just I basically duplicate the uh, file that I have here, delete this one, or d and delete that one on each one. And then um, I can go and set the bit that I have different for this one. Um, I'm also going to make this just a tiny bit bigger uh, so that, and, and I think with the less depth, maybe that will help as well. Um, and, you know, this would not be the end of the world. I think I should carefully clean that up uh, with a little chisel. In fact, I might try to do that uh, just to see how that works because I'll have an hour while the other one's going. Uh, but really, for the, the first pass on this, this is fantastic. Um, I'm thrilled with how this turned out. So, very cool. Alright, so I'll go over how I set this up. Do tape uh, on these two. This one, and then that one.
and then basically just mark where that tape would intersect on the back. Then tape it. A little bit of overhang on the tape. Kind of give you something to grab when you go to take it off. All right, the last time I put the glue on here, or the glue here, and sprayed this, um, I think that was a bad idea. So I'm going to do it the other way around. It, it wore it. All right, so this is just your standard super glue with the accelerator. Nothing special. So we'll do glue on this side. And we'll uh, spray this side. You know, and, and knowing what I learned there, I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the uh, this part. And get as minimal possible liquid that would touch um, this board. All right, and then you sort of hover it over where you want it. Line it up on these edges, then set it down and just kind of hold it there a little bit pretty much instant all right that's good then uh the next thing you do i've got um this loaded up here I, I just started using this easel um so far i highly recommend it uh one it controls the the printer so to speak cnc router uh, two, it's online, so I can do all the uh, work on my uh, desktop up in the office and then uh, bring this laptop down here to the shop, um, and then it automatically updates, so that's really nice. Um, so I've, I've gone and uh, changed the depth on this. I split it into two, so the battery, uh, the Lucas, Lucas part is one piece and the King Road is the other. Uh, so we'll go here to car uh, setting up machine was easy. I just picked uh, a generic 30 by 18 uh, I go to carve um, I've already measured the material. I haven't changed that uh, material is secure and it is a uh, That's correct. And then I'm gonna need to do the uh, set to zero now one thing that I learned and did wrong the first time was I, I couldn't understand what this meant but this you select this and then that's the distance it's going to move the x and y so you can start with this get close and then go down and get it exact with this um, so we'll do that jog the machine and that's all the way over then the y move it over there Okay, and then I can change to a smaller step now and move that back. I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, Z down so that I can get a better idea of where I need to do the X and Y. You get the idea. And then when you get it right down to the end there, then you change... The, the step size on this so you click on this and it highlights which I missed the first time so now when I do the jog it'll be using that as a step and then um, it wants you down on the surface uh, and I think the easier way of doing this is uh, to put a little something under there like you would set the valve lash on an engine, you would put a feeler in there 
um, and so I'm using this as a feeler and then I can feel when this uh, touches it and get down a little bit more and I selected the bigger step okay I can feel a little bit of friction so I'm gonna go with the small step now yeah okay so that's just a sheet of paper and now I can go down another thou and it should pinch it one more thou yeah so it's pretty tight another thou and so that should be the the top so it's not touching because I did have the paper in there but um, it was tight when I pulled it out so I feel that's good I set their interval um, to 0 0.01 now for the X and Y actually I think I can go a full inch on the X here yeah that was a little too much 0 0.1 okay and then uh, now I can move the Y a little bit oh, that looks really good I go to the smaller step um, and I don't care that much about this on on this one. So I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to come in And I want you to use new position. So that's good So when you break your bed off and have to restart it, you can use the old position. All right, so it'll raise a bit Turns the spindle on verify that the spindle is on Yes, and uh, off it goes so, pretty cool. Alright, and it is predicting 50 minutes left to do this one. Alright, so that's how I set it up and get it going. So that was mostly a success. Um, putting the, the accelerant on the bed instead of the back kept us from warping. Um, I put a little lubricant on these things. They were just squealing like crazy uh, This side is great The lower depth is just right uh, On this side it managed to go in and do all the detail work, but the, um, the The plywood Just came apart. You can see that it cut the eye But at one point it just flicked off um, So there's a little bit of run out on this and I don't think it's the spindle. I put an indicator on the spindle and the spindle looks good. It's these um, oh, What do they call the ER11 uh, Collets they, they just don't seat well. This doesn't thread well. It looks like the threads on this um, the nut um, Don't really Seat well on this and it doesn't really pull it up that well. So you can look at it It's not a lot but it's enough so I think what I need to do is well first of all I'm going to use the uh, the solid board I use the poplar that I glued up um, I'm going to put an even smaller bit in this but I'm going to tell the software uh, that it's a little bit bigger and then I think it will move around as if it's a little bit bigger bit which it is because it's got that little bit of run out on it um, so and give it another shot uh, but we're getting close uh, this part is good. So this time I'll cut this uh, This one first and make sure it's right then I'll do the other one Time for attempt number three all right, so I got tired of this this run out thing and so I took this off again and looked at it and there was basically uh, with this nut was machined and that's the stretch of the word and there was a burr in there um, and I happen to have um, a file on the other size that's just right. I was able to get in there and get that burr out. So now this seats well. And I mean, you, you can't see anything, but that's good because the run out is very, very minimal. And this nut now seats well. Um, to, <laughs> these threads are so poorly matching that it has to come on more than past here just to get the nut to seat right. So. You know, hey, it was, uh, it was less than 300 bucks. So, what do you expect? All right, so now we have um, 
a poplar. There's two pieces of poplar. Uh, I, I jointed them, put them together. Um, I took them down a little bit with the joiner. Uh, unfortunately, my planer is not working right uh, right now, so I was not able to go and uh, plane that down like I'd like to. Um, so we're gonna have to do that with uh, a scraper and some sandpaper. All right, so we're gonna adjust the thickness, reset the zero, and do the little king of the road uh, over here. I do have the smaller bit in. I am going to leave, uh, let the software think it has a slightly bigger bit, and hopefully that will give me a little bit more wiggle room on the king of the road part. All right, if you guessed broken bit in less than 30 seconds, you won the prize. So that's unfortunate. And uh, I selected the material as well, so I think, uh, I don't know, I have to go <laughs> run out of small bits. I got one more, and we'll, we'll see where we go on this. Maybe I change the material to hard maple, and maybe it'll slow down. Alright, let's go with the over under on um, 30 seconds. Oh, well, actually, it'll we'll probably make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, when I broke the bit before, I was quite surprised to find out how well it went through the old one. I didn't really make it back now. This is a little bit of more carbon, but this one is like a bit. turned out. I still think that's a little deep, but uh, I think I'm going to live with it. We'll see if I can get this finished the way I want without something going on. If something goes wrong, then I'll go ahead and, uh, and do it again. See if it's not quite as deep. Third time we're going off. That was its estimate of when it's going to be done. I think it's going to be within like 15 seconds. I think this is the last pass down. We'll get right there, go over. No. Nope. Oh wow, so this is going to be off by like 30 seconds. <laughs> it's great software, it's really amazing. Um, I think I definitely learned that uh, I don't know if this software supports it, but you're going to want to do this with a roughing bit. Um, and then come back in and do it with a fine bit. And I think in the worst case, you could just do two models. You could have one model that's the rough cut and do it with a bigger bit. 
and then come back and do uh, the other model, which is really just a copy uh, with a smaller vet. So there it is. I'm going to take it out and clean it up a little bit. And uh, I think it's going to be ready to go ahead and try to put it together in the box. Mostly cleaned up now. Uh, it's turned out, I, I mean, I'm really happy with how it worked. Uh, I needed to come through and separate the, the O and the F, the T and the H, uh, the E and the top of the D, the A and the bottom of the uh, H, and and so forth. Um, it, it couldn't fit through that, and, and it shouldn't have tried because that is smaller than the bit that I had on there. So that's exactly right. It's, it's doing the job. It, what would be just wonderful is you got a roughing pass a fine a, a, a fine pass and then make yet another copy and then go along with a chamfer bit on this uh, you can't do it in all of it so you would only do like these big outside ones you could certainly do this one it would be great uh, that would save a lot of time uh, you wouldn't have to clean up as much so definitely learning how to use this is uh, so this would be the fourth pass right yeah so i think uh that that shows you how far this has come uh this machine uh less than or right at 300 dollars from amazon uh and the software basically is 25 dollars a month but it's free for a 20 a 30 day trial uh, and the software is definitely worth it there, there's plenty of options but i really like it it's the uh, easel from instructables.com I, I thought it was really good. Uh, made it very easy for someone who hasn't done this before uh, to do it. So I recommend it. Uh, this one's a little bit different in that all of this is aluminum. There's no uh, resin or, or plastic in it. Uh, I thought that was really good. I did Loctite on every single screw in this thing. Uh, what's funny though is I didn't do Loctite on all the ones that they had in. They had a bunch of these little set screws, and I don't know where this one came from, but it was laying down here. So uh, I thought maybe it was in these, uh, but the little couplings for the um, Acme screws and, and the uh, motors, but it wasn't in there. Um, so I'm going to have to look around to see where that came from. It managed to complete the job uh, without it. It's, I guess it's now optimized. It has less parts, much better. Okay, so the next step on this is... Uh, clean this up a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and build the box and see how well I can get this finished. Um, and also I was uh, looking at doing a little bit different. Um, I gave up on doing this style of the lead, uh, uh, the coupling between the cells. Uh, the other style was uh, a, a, like a, a circle here, a circle here, and then a simple piece between the two. So I think that I might be able to go design that in the CAD and do it inverted and, and cut a mold. I'll have to see how well lead will pour into wood. Um, if I can do that, then I can just make a mold or a couple and pour the lead in that and then I'll have that to go across the bridge between the cells. So I think that'll look really good. So I think that's uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and do the box so I can get it up. The weather's warm right now, and I can go ahead and get uh, the plan is to do this whole thing with epoxy primer, uh, just like I would be doing anything else. Uh, that'll keep the wood from moving as much, um, and it's black already. So I can do uh, sort of a glossy black on top in the uh, where the area where the tar was poured, and then uh, I can put some reducer in and do the rest of it uh, with a little more of a matte finish. Basic box is done now. Turned out pretty good. Uh, it's a tight fit. I'd like it to be a little, <laughs> not quite as tight, uh, but I think it's okay. So what we're gonna do now is just trim these down and uh, it needs like, I mean, this is too big, uh, uh, too tall, but it needs a, uh, a sort of a band, an edge around. You can see, uh, grab the picture see how it has this edge around it yeah and this edge is going to need to be pretty rounded too but first uh, step is just to get it on um, and then we'll uh, do some rounding on it
Closer. All right, so we've got this edge on. Uh, thankfully, I remembered to round this over before I put it on because, boy, that would have been a bear to try to get to later. Uh, we're going to get in the corners round. Top. I need to get this rounded over a little bit. And then um, one of the things about the tar top was how they were made was they had these cells that were in there and they had the outside rubber uh, container and then they literally poured tar on the top. So I want to try to get, I'm going to work on it now, um, a little bit of a, not a chamfer, but a uh, fillet, I, I guess would be the word, around these edges so it looks like tar was poured in. Um, and it needs to be a glossy finish where the rest of it will be uh, sort of flat. And uh, so I'm going to keep working on that. I'm actually thinking about, <laughs> you're going to love this, is, is pouring flex seal, the, the liquid, and pour that in there and see, um, obviously I'll do an experiment somewhere else, to see if that will actually fill in there and give me the right look. So I'd probably do that as a last step. So i got to get this a little bit closer. Then I'm going to go with the black epoxy primer, and then I'm probably going to shoot um, some good old sanding primer on it and go through the whole thing as if, you know, you were doing a car part. Um, and then with, when it goes to do the finish, that's when I might try to do the uh, flex seal. And, and I'm actually looking at spraying this in flex uh, seal. Actually, I did a, an experiment on this one. Um, and it, and it sort of has that finish, the, the, I sort of wasted my time on this because I didn't get the grain filled. So you're seeing the grain in there too. But um, you can't really tell on camera. But this does have a better feel than if it were just um, paint. I mean, Flex Seal is rubberized uh, spray. So we'll see how that works. Epoxy primer is done. Uh, we got two good coats on uh, the outside and the inside. This should be sealed nicely. So now uh, we're going to make this not look like a wood box and get rid of the wood grain uh, by putting a 2K primer on this, two pack primer for those of you in the UK, uh, Europe. We get that on there and then um, I haven't decided on what I'm going to paint the outside with. I think I may go back with this primer and have it, uh, epoxy primer, and have it reduced. Because um, when it reduces, it's, it's more of a flat uh, or less sheens. And I think that'll probably look right. One thing I'm noticing, um, I'm sure it picks up on the camera, is the lack of, of, you can't see these things after all that work. And it's interesting in that if you look at the ads that Lucas had for the battery, these were typically yellow or white. Um, but then in, well, I think there's only one picture of a battery they found. It was not. Um, so the thought was that they did that for the ad uh, to make it stand out. And it might not be correct, but I think I'm going to do the same. Um, because it, it just doesn't pop. We'll, we'll see when it gets done. Oh, and uh, the top. To get the poured in tar effect, I'm going to use uh, an epoxy with a black pigment and uh, what's it called? Doming. And you just brush it in there uh, and get it to sort of um, to pull a little bit. Because uh, I'm not going to plug this up and fill the whole thing. Um, but though that's going to, it's going to come pretty close to that. 2K primer is complete. So now I'm going to go and sand down. I still got some areas that are a little low, a little bit of wood grain showing here and there. Um, probably be able to maybe fill some of them, probably sand it down and then shoot it one more time. But I think we're close. Love the way it looks. All right, I forget just how much that isn't fun. But that's done now. It looks good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, epoxy back on it. And it'll be getting even closer. Getting a little bit closer. 
I like the uh, the finish here. It isn't absolutely perfect, but it's pretty darn close. I sprayed a uh, basically like um, with a flex seal. You know, the one you can just you rip a hole in your boat and just spray flex seal on it and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's about what it is. Uh, the top is just a little bit too shiny. You can see it's 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 not glossy shiny, but uh, I needed it a little bit less shiny. So I'm not 100% sure what to do with that. What I'm trying to get is uh, when I put the epoxy in here, uh, I want it to be shiny and then this less shiny and then this very not shiny. So that's sort of, this is the um, the part of the rubber that was in the case, it was in the mold. And then this is, a, 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 again, I think still rubber, but it's it's different. Um, so it was um, shinier than this, but not, not as shiny as that is. And then this top, it was a tar, and it's very glossy. So I need a contrast, and I don't think when I put um, my tar lookalike in this area, that'll be enough contrast. Um, I, an option I have is to mask this off and spray it again with something that's a little bit uh, more matte. Um, so, but it's getting very close. So next up is uh, to make the reverse uh, mold. Uh, well, the mold, which will be the reverse of these bridges that I'll have. I have one here, 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 and here. And uh, get those molded up and uh, get those attached. Uh, you got to get these holes a little bit bigger too. The um, caps no longer fit. The uh, sill bridges are now done. You see the, uh, this is the piece of wood I routed out to form the mold. I poured a lead in there. Um, looks pretty good. So I need to uh, put them all back in and file them down to get them flat and then uh, dress this up to make it look uh, uh, you know like it didn't come out of a wood mold so uh, here's what they look like on the battery so that's what we're looking at I'm still not happy with the sheen on this so I'm gonna try again to get it um, a little less a little more matte a little less gloss um, but I get these filed down, I'm going to drill the holes um, in there and kind of uh, mount them with a little bit of uh, glue, but basically a screw coming up from the inside to hold them in place. Uh, actually, now I think about that, that's going to be, oh boy, I'm going to have to countersink that. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. There'll be enough room to uh, countersink up into this to get uh, the screw to where it won't touch the battery cover. I mean the uh, top of the battery. Blah. Uh, Alright, so the order on this is file these down, get the holes in there, mock them up, uh, you know, test fit, and then take those off, get this sheen cut down one more time, and then uh, the pigment for the epoxy came in, so uh, tomorrow I'll go uh, and put the epoxy in. Uh, that'll give us the tar look on the top. Uh, and once that's dry, we can uh, mount the cells. And uh, we got to find the, one of the caps. Um, it seems to have lost that. Fortunately, I haven't taken the garbage out. So it'll be in here somewhere. So that's going to wrap it up. The battery is now done. I'm really happy with how the uh, tar effect came out. That's uh, an epoxy with a black pigment in it. Uh, I, I think that the uh, smooth rubber came out really good. That's just a, uh, a flat black. It's been polished a little bit. And then uh, I think the real amazing uh, part is this, this flex seal. I mean, if you, but you can't feel it through the camera, but uh, I mean, it feels like rubber because it is rubber. The rubber in a can sprayed on it. So, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, the lead thing, that, that was a blast. I haven't done that before, and that was a lot of fun. 
Um, so these are screwed in from the back and I have a little bit of epoxy uh, in there to hold both the screw in and uh, them on. All right, so that wraps that up. I get it in the car and uh, wrap this whole project up. So with the battery complete, I put the hood on. That's getting the car basically complete at this point. Uh, I had one issue with the amp meter, um, and I've got that changed out. So I'm going to go ahead and get the dash back in, and then uh, get that under dash cover in place. And then uh, put the steering wheel in. Uh, I got these little side uh, side curtain buffers. You put those in. I've ordered some screws for that. Those are 440. In case you're interested, I got one more snap to put on. And you can see uh, in the back, I, I've put a ton, ton of cover on it. Uh, it's got a split down the middle. I'll show that uh, when I when I get it out. So I've been still driving it in the neighborhood, uh, and it's uh, working really well. Um, I got it tuned with the color tune. It's a great device for cars like these. You basically tune it by color. Uh, it replaces a spark plug and uh, or it's it's like a visible spark plug so you can see um, the color of the flame and you want to get sort of a, a blue flame instead of an orange flame and not a white flame and that's uh, between rich and lean. Alright so I'm going to wrap up a few more things and then uh, take it out and I'll do a, a, a once one more over and then we'll, we'll drive some.